Now, among the vasodilators, let me discuss the first one that is the potassium channel openers. That is potassium channel openers. Now, if you take this particular potassium channel openers, the drugs which are included in this group are number one, hydralazine and the other drugs are minoxidil and the other drugs are disoxide, right, the other drugs are disoxide. Now, these drugs, hydralazine, minoxidil and as well as disoxide, they will cause vasodilatation mainly within the arterioles, right, they will cause vasodilatation mainly within the arterioles. Now, how do they cause vasodilatation within the arterioles is by opening the potassium channels, right, by opening potassium channels right by opening potassium channels they will cause vasodilatation within the arterioles and remember these particular drugs they have negligible effect right they have negligible effect on venules right they have negligible effect on venules Whereas, you take hydralazine, as such all these three drugs will cause vasodilatation by causing the opening of the potassium channels. Whereas, you take this hydralazine, hydralazine in addition to opening of the potassium channels, this hydralazine it also causes the release of nitric oxide from endothelium, from endothelium of the blood vessel, alright. So, once this particular nitric oxide is released, this nitric oxide will also cause vasodilatation. But remember, in order to have the hydralazine to cause nitric oxide release from the endothelium, the endothelium should be intact the endothelium should be intact endothelium all right only from the intact endothelium nitric oxide is released and that will cause vasodilatation now among these drugs you take minoxidil and as well as hydralazine this particular minoxidil and as well as hydralazine they can be given orally right they are given orally for the treatment of severe hypertension whereas you take this particular disoxide this disoxide it is given in hypertensive emergencies right it is given in hypertensive emergencies via intravenous route right whenever you are giving disoxide in hypertensive emergencies we give this via the intravenous route or the intravenous injection. Now, let me discuss few points about the hydralazine. If you take this particular hydralazine, this hydralazine it is metabolized by acetylation. Right, it is metabolized by the process of acetylation. Thus, its effect is genetically determined due to the presence of slow and fast acetylators. Remember this is a very very important point. This hydralazine it is metabolized by acetylation. So its effect is determined genetically due to the presence of slow and fast acetylators. And another important point is on prolonged use of this particular hydralazine this can lead to drug induced lupus erythematosus 
right this can lead to drug induced lupus erythematosus so on prolonged administration of this particular drug this will cause the drug induced lupus erythematosus whereas you take this particular minoxidil minoxidil as such it is a pro drug right minoxidil it is a pro drug now what is the active form of this minoxidil the active form it is activated within the liver so the active form is minoxidil sulfate right the active form is minoxidil sulfate this minoxidil sulfate it is formed in the liver right it is formed in the liver by phase 2 reaction by phase 2 reaction all right so minoxidil as such it is a pro drug it is converted into active form that is minoxidil sulfate within the liver via phase 2 reaction now very important point what you should remember is because it is metabolized in the liver the levels of minoxidil they are not changed in the renal disease so it is particularly useful in patients with chronic renal failure all right so this minoxidil it has no effect in patients with renal disease so that is the reason why this is particularly useful in patients with the chronic renal failure but if you take the adverse effect associated with the minoxidil this minoxidil it will cause hirsutism right this particular minoxidil it will cause abnormal hair growth in females right it will cause abnormal hair growth in females and this adverse effect of abnormal hair growth it has been utilized as a treatment for alopecia in males right this particular minoxidil it will cause hirsutism in females this abnormal adverse effect of minoxidil that is abnormal hair growth it has been utilized as a treatment of as a treatment of alopecia right as a treatment of alopecia this is about the minoxidil whereas you take disoxide what did we discuss disoxide it is used in hypertensive emergencies via the intravenous route but remember this particular disoxide it is a thiazide derivative right this disoxide it is a thiazide derivative because it is a thiazide derivative this can cause hyperuricemia this can cause increase in the blood glucose right it will cause hyperuricemia and it will also cause hyperglycemia now how it will cause hyperglycemia is this disoxide it will inhibit the insulin release from the beta cells of the pancreas very important point it will cause hyperglycemia by inhibiting the insulin release from the beta cells of the pancreas and thereby this disoxide will cause hyperglycemia now you see this disoxide what are we discussing like how is it causing hyperglycemia it is inhibiting the insulin release from the beta cells of the pancreas so that is why this particular effect is used in insulinoma it is used in insulinoma remember what is insulinoma insulinoma it is a tumor where there is excessive release of insulin from the beta cells now when you give this disoxide disoxide will inhibit the release of insulin from the beta cells and thereby disoxide is used in the treatment of insulinoma 
so if you take the potassium channel blockers they include hydralazine minoxidil and as well as disoxide they have the vasodilatory effect on the arterioles by causing the opening of the potassium channels they have very negligible effect on the venules and this hydralazine apart from opening the potassium channels they will also cause the release of nitric oxide from the endothelium but it should require an intact endothelium for the release of nitric oxide an important point is this particular hydralazine it is metabolized by acetylation within the liver so on prolonged use of this hydralazine will cause drug induced lupus erythematosus whereas you take this hydralazine and as well as minoxidil they are used oral route for severe hypertension whereas disoxide it is used via the intravenous route for hypertensive emergencies and you take this particular minoxidil the adverse effect is it will increase the growth of the hair and that particular adverse effect is used in the treatment of alopecia and you take the minoxidil minoxidil as such it is a pro drug and it is converted into minoxidil sulfate in the liver by phase 2 reactions and this minoxidil sulfate it has no effect on the kidney so that is the reason why it is very much useful in the treatment of hypertension in those patients who are having chronic renal failure and you take disoxide disoxide it is basically a thiazide derivative so that is the reason why they will increase the uric acid levels and they will also increase the blood glucose levels and this disoxide will inhibit the insulin release from the beta cells of the pancreas so that is the reason why disoxide it is used in the treatment of insulinoma